to provide you an update on the JEDI work, the Justice, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and the consultant um, that we hired as the Alliance to assist us through this process. And uh, just as a little bit of background, we are joined today by August Ball, who is the president owner of the firm uh, and has been working with our working group, uh, members of the steering committee, as well as our JEDI group to assist us not only through the selection process. Um, we came to you last year uh, asking that we were looking to, to do work on this. We put together an RF for qualifications and the working group uh, identified the consultant which we felt best would assist us in this journey. And uh, in meeting with uh, August, um, she helped us identify our goals uh, as an alliance. And so um, I am going to um, allow, uh, you know, um, and I can't speak as much to it, uh, but I would hope that August, since you have not met her, um, she is a dynamic individual very qualified in the space, and we're so glad to have her with us. So August, can I turn it over to you and uh, let you take us through where we are and, and where we're hoping to go? Absolutely. Uh, if uh, someone could just give me hosting capacity, I can share my screen. Um, a quick intro for folks who have not met me before. And thank you so much for uh, for letting me join you all today. Okay. Oh, friend. So to give you a little background, again, my name is August Ball. I come to you from the ancestral lands of the Potawatomi and Menominee. Uh, tribes here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm the founder and CEO of Cream City Conservation. We are a two-pronged social enterprise, which means that we take the profits from our consulting work that we do with environmental organizations like your own and provide paid uh, employment and training experiences for young adults, predominantly of color here in the Milwaukee area. So uh, we started our work in 2016, but I have been in the conservation space now for over 15 years. Uh, we work in the space of land. Uh, we do this through a partnership with our local county parks department, the DNR, the US Forest Service. Uh, young adults get trained on how to do conservation work, forestry, uh, wildlife management and the like. We also work in the space of water. We do this through a partnership with the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District. Uh, these young adults get trained on green infrastructure installation, uh, climate science, as well as community engagement. We also have crews that work in the food sovereignty space. And we do this in partnership with our uh, public school system, our uh, local university here, uh, UW-Milwaukee, and the Boys and Girls Club. These young adults grow food from seed and sell it at local farmers markets to local restaurants. Uh, and when we were not in the global pandemic, uh, selling salads at Brewer Games actually on Sundays. We also work in the space of policy. And we do this through a partnership with Escuela Verde and uh, the Alliance for Climate Education. Uh, we helped launch their programs uh, in Madison and uh, Milwaukee in 2018 and 19, respectively. Uh, the ACE has moved to a, uh, a more decentralized model, but I'm still very proud to have been a part of uh, that movement here uh, to support young adults, um, teens specifically, in helping to register over 20,000 people to vote in last year's election. Uh, this is some photos of our students with um, elected officials. And new this year is our uh, re-entry re program called Fresh Coast, Fresh Start, which engages returning citizens in careers in green infrastructure as well. Uh, they learn about um, and how to install permeable pavement. Uh, they get trained up in OSHA 30 and other, uh, other um, certifications that would make them un uh, undeniably qualified roles in our industry. So this is just a, a couple examples of organizations that we've supported, not at all an exhaustive list. We work with around 20 organizations every year. So here's our process and methodology for what will happen with the Alliance. 
we start off by assessing your organizational culture. And because you are an alliance, uh, we are doing a multi-pronged approach to assessing uh, the industry, which I'm really excited about. From there, we're going to move into establishing our foundational and advanced level um, understanding of racial equity, which then can lead us into uh, obtaining tools uh, that will help us establish the culture, the workplace practices necessary to attract and cultivate and retain top talent um, from a wide range of uh, demographics. And then lastly, uh, phase three is about uh, customizing a strategy. So taking what we have learned from our benchmark assessment, this shared language that we've established uh, with the education series, and then helping the Alliance establish uh, a strategy moving forward to achieve its future desired state. So again, the goal of the survey, our phase one, is to help bring clarity uh, to a very complex topic. The results from the assessment will show you um, where and if uh, there are different experiences uh, um, uh, lived out through your company and your employees. So it's really important that we are evaluating diversity metrics versus inclusion metrics because diversity um, of staff does not equate to inclusion and belonging and being able to leverage that diversity. Uh, it also does not guarantee racial equity. So diversity metrics measures a balance of people in the workplace, right? Ensuring that your organization is representative of the labor force. Inclusion metrics, however, evaluate the employee's experience um, and compares that against the experiences of others based on their identity. So one of the top two reasons I recommend individuals, uh, sorry, organizations get a base, uh, sorry, an assessment done is that it allows you line of where you are. Um, rather than making assumptions, you get an accurate perception of the current state of inclusion and belonging for your organization. It will also allow you to assess the impact of your current policies, practices, programs uh, moving forward. The other reason why this is so valuable is that it allows you to identify opportunities for improvement. You can use the powerful analytics to see where uh, different stakeholders in your organization are having different experiences and where you might be able to have the biggest impact. So the seven main factors that our assessment uh, evaluates is belonging, fairness, opportunities and resources, decision making, diversity, sense of voice and contribution to broader purpose. We do add in additional demographics, uh, but the main demographics that we're looking at will be gender identity, race and ethnicity, sexual orientation, uh, whether or not someone identifies as transgender, age, education, tenure in your organization, their caregiver status, uh, whether that or not they care for someone other than their child, their family status, their native language, physical abilities, and veteran status. The custom demographics we include are rank and role, job status, job level, political affiliation, religious affiliation, location, uh, organization, family status, whether or not someone identifies as being mixed race. Uh, and individuals will be able to select up to three different race and ethnic identities, uh, whether or not the individual is multilingual, uh, and much more. So on the back end, when individuals complete the assessment, what I see is something akin to this. So as you can see in this example, we're able to evaluate the experiences of um, individuals and groups based on heat maps. In this particular example, we're looking at the experiences of teams. So you can see that the team of sales, for example, is having a significantly uh, more difficult time um, in the overall organization. Each of these factors that you see to the left-hand corner have corresponding questions that are asked of the, the responders uh, in the assessment. And the assessment is based on a Likert scale um, and all questions are formulated in the affirmative. You can also see here that events, um, the, the team of events is having a much higher uh, reported rate of engagement overall. What I really appreciate about this assessment is that it allows us to see where we're thriving and where we have some opportunities for improvement. And because people live intersectional lives, the assessment also allows us to see how our identities intersect and overlap to inform our experiences. 
So as an example here on the left-hand side, we're evaluating and comparing uh, the experiences of women of color in comparison to white women and men of color in comparison to white men. On the right-hand side, we're comparing gender and ability. We're comparing the experiences of uh, individuals who identify as male not having a disability and male uh, having a disability and women having a disability and women stating that they, they do not have a disability. Again, this allows us to see any disparities in experiences um, based on identity. So, uh, this is our tentative schedule for our work right now. Um, we have not officially launched the assessment. Uh, we are still um, in the process of um, custom, the, the last stages of customizing that. Um, one of the benefits of this as well, of this, this assessment, is that it will not only give us a bird's eye view of how members of the Alliance are doing, but also each of your organizations that participate in this uh, will be able to get a report for your own organization as well to see how you're doing. That will go to uh, your organization directors, um, uh, leadership specifically, it will not be shared with uh, external members. So. If you are with TNC, only TNC gets their report. Everyone, however, will get the, um, the overall report for the Alliance. Um, let's see. And so here's our timeline uh, as it relates to the education series. So we're starting off with racial equity and environmentalism. Uh, some of you, some of your staff may have participated in some of my workshops in the past. Uh, so we'll be going through that process again, starting in September and then picking up again in January, 2022. We will have one workshop uh, per month and those recordings will be available for a limited time. I believe we agreed upon uh, one month from the initial airing uh, and then they will be removed. So if anyone from your organization is not able to attend the live um, workshop, they will be able to review it uh, within a month um, prior to the next workshop. This is done intentionally, uh, primarily because each of our workshops build upon the previous one. Uh, and so we don't want attendees uh, coming to workshops when they haven't had the foundational um, or preliminary and prerequisite sessions yet. Uh, I won't go into each of the workshops just yet in case there's questions. So I, I'll, I'll come back to that in a, in a moment, but I wanna just pause here to see if there are any questions with regards to uh, the assessment. Um, this is Sheree Fisher from the U.S. Forest Service. I have a, a wonky question. Go ahead. Um, how do you maintain participants' anonymity if someone falls in a category where there are not a lot of people? Yeah, great question. Not a wonky question at all. So we have a minimum sample size requirement. Uh, typically, that size is between three and five. Um, also, uh, none of the responders will be attributed to their um, email address. So everyone will receive the same link, the same passcode. Uh, and they can complete this on a mobile phone. They can complete it on their desktop. Either is user, very user friendly. Um, so when there is not a, um, uh, a minimum demographic uh, that is met, we will see that, you know, for example, we, we have two Southeast Asian uh, individuals who filled out the survey, but we won't be able to see their responses. There Thank is, you. Yeah, absolutely. There will also be a survey um, frequently asked questions uh, document that will be shared with all leaders uh, to help answer any questions that your staff may have as well. Any other questions? No, I guess um, this is Jim Jarrett, so I got a question for you. Um, the um, is the idea of the survey to survey all of the individuals from all of our Chicago wilderness partners. You know, we've got whatever 200 or so the people that are engaged with Chicago wilderness. So, for example, <clears throat> you know, I'm I work for a company that's you know got 3,000 employees. Um, with is the intent that the survey would be trying to survey we who are engaged in Chicago wilderness, so if there's maybe two or three people from my organization that typically engage with that, is that the focus? Um, or is the intent to kind of have us as the leaders take it back to our full organization and make the offering to, you know, 100 people or 200 people or 2,000? Yeah, so it's the latter. We want to get an assessment of the of all organizations that have either been 
affiliated with Chicago Wilderness Alliance or should be affiliated with Chicago Wilderness Alliance. Um, the questionnaire will ask uh, whether or not individuals um, are actively participating with the Alliance or not. So we'll be able to decipher those, um, those individuals and their responses. Uh, also, we want as many people as possible in your organization to complete the assessment so that your data is more useful to you. So we can accommodate thousands and thousands of um, participants in this assessment. Uh, and we've done this with as a little as, uh, I believe, 17 people uh, and as with as many as over 4,000. Uh, I anticipate that we will have more than 4,000. I hope we will have more than 4,000 um, for this particular assessment. Hi, this is Greg Mueller. I've got a question and it's kind of maybe a question or a request for, I'm assuming there's gonna be a communication piece that goes with this. I'm just thinking that, you know, most of our organizations have our own questionnaires that are going on and have, you know, at the Botanic Garden, we have our own consultant, we're working on this, we have this. So, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how we bring in another questionnaire, how that interfaces with what else is going on and how we get buy-in. So I was just wondering how that communication piece is gonna be packaged to, to get buy-in and, and participation. Absolutely. So there will be a communications uh, draft provided to all leaders, uh, one for yourselves, and then also one that can be shared uh, with your organization that would be a template that you can customize to your own verbiage, your own cadence, uh, to share out with your individual, uh, with, with your individual staff members. Um, now, in terms of the work that uh, you're doing already in your organizations, uh, we do encourage everyone to, to participate in this particular assessment to help us get a, a concrete view of, of where we are as a collective. Um, and then hopefully in a few years, we reassess ourselves after we've completed the education series to see have we made progress. Thanks for the question. This hasn't been asked yet, but uh, this assessment should take anywhere from seven to 15 minutes uh, for your staff time, just in case that's a concern as well. Any other questions? Incorrect, August. Thank you so much. That was great. And I really appreciate the questions. Also, the survey they need, they can't stop and come back because we're not identifying it with any you know, email or anything else like that. So um, once you start, you need to, to finish. Yeah. But it is very user friendly. Um, and, and I thought it was very well done. I, I also want to give a shout out. August did an excellent job in leading the working group uh, that collaborated and really uh, helped to ensure the types of questions, how to work with all of this. I mean, just really thoughtful. And it was just a great group to, to work with to, to get us to where we are today. Any more questions before? And please friends, don't feel like this is your last time to be able to connect with me. Uh, you have my contact information. Once you are able to review the communications um, templates, as well as the uh, survey participants, uh, frequently asked questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me or even directly to, to Laura or uh, Elizabeth with any questions that you might have or concerns I'm more than happy to support to make sure that we all are, particip are able to get our, our um, organizations participated in the assessment. So maybe this is a question for you, Elizabeth or August. Um, what when we get this started? Is there going to be like a introductory letter uh, reaching out to the partners that say, "Hey, you know, we're going to be doing this. If you're interested, okay, great, great, thanks." That's yeah, definitely. We want this to be as painless as possible for, sure. for the partners, um, which is why we'll offer you a template letter um, that you can basically just populate your name, your signature in and or put on your letterhead and share out to your organizations. Um, you're also welcome to to utilize your own, but we definitely wanted to not put additional work <laughs> on your plates. Um, so, yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah. The other thing, and the letter will explain it, and, and when you do the survey, um, there is a place for the partners. Every partner has been listed, and so you'll want to ensure in your teams that they select your organization 
so that you can get your data. Um, but because of all the demographics and things, this is from a collective, really is the value uh, and, and helping us ensure this is aligning with our green vision and um, ensuring that we are um, broadening um, and, and just the how we are working and, and increasing participation in the core of why this is so important. It's really understand all of our members and those that have been engaged here and have continued to be engaged. That's wonderful. And that's awesome. But, you know, really looking forward to knowing those that have not been, how can we ensure that they can join us and feel comfortable and, and how can we retain those that may have left us and, and, you know, get those questions answered. So again, very exciting. I, I just think this is going to be absolutely wonderful. And I don't know if it's been done on this large of a scale before. So August, uh, thank you for pioneering this with us. Thank you for allowing me to lead it. I'm, I'm really excited. Obviously, you know, we all have a vested interest in ensuring that our public lands, our waters, um, you know, our wildlife is protected for generations to come. And that is going to require that we have all hands on deck. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just really grateful to, to be a part of this and um, really excited to see what information we get. For those of you who uh, have not yet been able to begin uh, this journey with your organization and are worried that your staff will um, ask, well, what next? Um, this is what's next. <laughs> we then take that assessment and then go forward with establishing that shared language and understanding with our education series. So, uh, but that will also be outlined uh, in the communications letters as well. Any other questions? Thank you so much, August. Um, again, appreciate that. And of course, any questions anyone can ask at any time and, and we'll, we'll get those answers for you. And these, and these workshops too that are gonna be up and coming are open. So they, this is just great added value for being a part of the Alliance of all these resources uh, that we make available to all of our organizations. So, so great. great. All right. 